Contra Corn Shelton is our next Lion Legend, a native of Oxford, Mississippi. She still ranks as UNA's eighth all-time leading scorer despite playing just two years at UNA. She holds the school record for points in a season and in a game. She led UNA to two NCAA tournament appearances, including a Gulf South Conference Championship in 1985, a graduate of UNA that same very year. LaCondra, thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with us. How are you doing as we head into this video? I am doing great, and I, I tell you, it's an honor. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. I really appreciate it. We're going to jump into your career in just a second, but first off, update UNA fans on where life has taken you now. Well, I'm, right now I'm uh, at, um, in a little town called Rosamond, California. It's uh, near the Mojave Desert. Um, I actually work at Edwards Air Force Base. It's a test base. And so I've been there now um, almost coming up on eight years. Eight years will be, no, I've been there eight years, a little eight, eight years because I got here in June of 2012. So it's been a great opportunity. I've been with the Department of Defense for the Air Force now for over 30 years, had a great career. So yeah, I've been able to move around a lot and uh, do a lot of different jobs. So it's been good. We're going to talk all about your career, an outstanding athletic career. We're going to talk about your post-UNA career and endeavors as well. But first off, the University of North Alabama, we open all these segments with this. What's it like reflecting back? What does Florence mean to you? You know, um, coming from a small town like Oxford, um, I went to Northwest for two years. That was great. Another small venue. Uh, I was more comfortable there. Um, coming uh, out of Northwest, we had won the national championship, so there was a lot of recruiting going on. Um, I went to uh, about three different schools to visit. These were huge campuses where they bus people across the campus to get to class. It was just way too Im intimidating for me, a small town girl. And um, I, you know, told my uh, junior college coach, Coach Harry Adair, who's legendary in Mississippi and uh, all in North Mississippi. And um, I said, I, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I said, this is, this is too much. I have no idea what to do because I knew there were players, you know, at that time um, with the NCAA, the rules were if you transferred, you lost a year eligibility. So considering I only had two years left, I didn't want to do that, you know. Um, and I wanted to be happy, you know, because I, I wanted to graduate in four years and I wanted to be happy. I wanted to do well. I knew there were also issues where coaches recruited you and left. They knew they were leaving, but their job was to recruit. I didn't want to run into those situations. And um, Coach Adair introduced me to Coach Bird, um, you know, and, you know, again, he's from Mississippi, you know, <laughs> and so, you know, that just made me feel good. Um, the day I, ca I came to UNA to visit, it was just amazing. It felt like home. You know, walking across that campus, those people didn't know me from Adam, but everybody was like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, hi, how you doing? You know, I met um, Gloria Bush uh, the first day, you know, she was so excited. She became my roommate the, the year I got there. Um, the ladies, you know, every, I will say every school that you go visit, you know, they're gonna have you play you know what I'm saying they're gonna have you play because the girls want to size you up the coach want to see what see what the jail is like and I will say every school that I've gone to visit those three schools it was always a me against them you know what I'm saying it wasn't a welcoming thing hey let's play let's hang out that was absolutely the opposite at UNA you know those ladies it was like we had been teammates forever already and this was just us playing a pickup game so I just felt that warmth there I felt um, just the connection there and I never regretted it because even um, when I saw how even the the faculty were involved you know what I'm saying they were really supportive of it they were part of it I felt part of a family I felt part of a unit you know I just really felt supported there I knew everybody that was going to support my success you know what I'm saying it makes a difference when you know everybody there is there because they want to see you succeed. So that was one of the great things about UNA for me. So you arrive on campus in year one. What a season you guys had, a 25-5 and five record. And you made the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. What was that first year like for you? You know, coming from um, – Northwest where we were, you know, we were JUCO champions. So, you know, I came from a place where we were winning teams. So I didn't know anything else, you know. Um, and so just to have a group of uh, 
young ladies and coaches around who truly had the same attitude, who had an awesome work ethic. We were trying to get it right every time. You know, there was no complaining. There was, you know, it, it was everybody wanted that goal of winning and of doing better and of, you know, taking whatever their weaknesses were and making it better. And it was just awesome playing with them. It was just, it was a great feeling, you know, being with these young ladies that, you know, I felt so close to and just, you know, who we, I can't say they took me in, uh, you know, under the fold, but we just kind of all took care of each other. So it was, it was really a good feeling. It was really a good feeling. Your junior year, you scored 655 points, a school record, an average of 21.8 points per game. What kind of offensive player were you? Take us back. You know, I take it. And here's the thing I, I will tell you, and this is even, um, with um, when, when I'm playing, you know, I'm lost. I, I'm on that court and that, you know, Coach Bird will say, getting my attention, that's a hard feat when I'm out there and I'm focused on what's happening. It's me and that ball and, and it's me and the ball, even for the other players, they disappear. It's just me and that ball. And so, you know, I, I, had, I had a stress fracture uh, my senior year and so I couldn't practice um, and uh, so, I didn't really start practicing until maybe a week or two before we started playing games. So I was horribly out of shape, you know. Um, but so that amazes me. And I somebody had showed me an article, and this was just here recently. I think it was just this past year. I think when we went to the alumni um, event, and somebody showed me an article that Coach Bird had had done. Uh, I think it was after I graduated. I don't even know when he. I don't even remember the date on it. But in there, he said, you know, he talked about the fact that I had a stress fracture, and um, I wasn't aware that Coach Long, Johnny Long, who was our head um, athletic trainer, had told him that you got to pick. Either she plays for the season or she practices one other. She can't do both. And um, he um, and I, and, and, he, and he, in that article, he said, you know, she didn't practice the whole season but still became an All-American. You know, and, they, and I just, you know, that's again, you know, you don't think about yourself or your career at that time, you know. And so I often look back because I did play after um, I left UNA. I did play just, you know, um, I played for, for the Air Force teams and I played in some, you know, community teams. But, you know, I, um, I often think what, what if I wasn't injured? Because at that, during that year, I had the stress fracture. I had a hip pointer. I had a broken finger. I had my, uh, I had gotten stitches in my eye. And I remember we were going to go and play um, Delta State. And we were driving through Oxford. And so we stopped at the gas station. My mom came to the gas station to meet us. And at that time, I still had the hip pointer. I had the stretch. So I'm all bandaged up from basically head to toe, my fingers. And she looked at Coach Rose. She said, what did you do to my kid? <laughs> And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, it's worse, it's not as bad as it looks, but, you know, I just, I truly love the game, you know, I, I love the game, I love the excitement of it, I love the camaraderie of it, it was, it, it was, you know, definitely for me, um, it was just a, a, a really good place to you know, get away, get out, get out of any frustrations, anything that's going on. When I'm out there, the world disappears. You know, and that's that's all I can explain for it. truly. When I'm on that court, I'm playing. The world disappears for me. So it, it's just an amazing uh, opportunity to be able to do that. In the year first, you guys won a game in the NCAA tournament, beating Alabama A&M. You later lose to Valdosta, who beat you guys in the Gold South Conference Championship game. But that tournament win, first year making the tournament, getting the first postseason win in program history, what's it like now thinking back about how special it is? And, you, and you know, I think um, when you're going through it, for me, I just like to play the game. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't into – um, the, the rankings and all this. I just like to play the game. You know, I just, just give, give me the ball. Let me have my shoes. Let me go out there and do it. So I, all, a lot of these things uh, that people are talking about now, I didn't realize, you know what I'm saying? I, Cause it, it wasn't about that. It was just about, I just wanted to play. And so, you know, looking, looking at that, I'm thinking, wow, we did some, we did some pretty cool stuff, you know, because now I understand more about the NCAA rankings and, you know, where you fall in that. And I'm like, we, we really, we really, really were a good team. We did some cool stuff. So yeah, looking back on that, I, I'm very proud of what we were able to accomplish, you know, 
you know, those a few girls getting together and making up our mind. We wanted to make something happen and we did it, you know, we did it. So I want to circle back to something you were just talking about. You scored okay. a school record 43 points against West Georgia your senior year. I think it might have been on the road. You had 31 in the first half. UNA won that game 89 to 86. And you just talked about all the various injuries that you had. The story goes, broken finger, pad on your leg, stitches in an eye. You got any memories of the record-setting game? You know, here I did. I, you know, and I remember, and I in no in no way compare myself to Michael Jordan. Please believe me when I say this. But I remember Michael Jordan saying in one of his games, I think it was the one game he scored sixty three points. This was early in his career, and he was like, "I couldn't miss. I don't care what I threw up. That's how it was for me that night. I couldn't miss. I don't care what I threw up. I couldn't miss." But in contrast to that, I also had a two point game. Well, I couldn't hit. I don't care what I drew up. I couldn't hit. I have no idea what was going on. I could be right on the basket. I don't know. That ball would roll right out. Two points a whole game. So I don't know. Maybe that was, you know, karma making up for that two-point game. I don't know. But truly, I don't care what I threw up. It went in. Let's talk about your head coach during this stretch, Wayne Bird. What do you remember about playing for him? You know, he was definitely a, a task master, master. You know, he had a vision. Um, you know, he, 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 he knew what he wanted out of us, you know, and, um, you know, he was, he was determined to get that. I will say, you know, he was on point. You know, he did a, a great job, you know, in scouting the team. So we were always prepared. Um, Definitely, you know, I will say, you know, I became a better free throw shooter because of him. I struggled with my free throws all even during JUCO. I remember even at, at Northwest, we had, there was a rule where um, we had to, um, you had to run five laps for every free throw you missed. We were on the road, had a tournament. I ended up running a hundred laps. That's how many free throws I missed. But I still couldn't get it together. I don't know what it was about that free throw line. And then I remember it was actually my senior year, uh, and after the loss, of course, to um, to Valdosta in the GSU tournament, and uh, that was one of the discussions, you know, Coach, because I'm always like, well, you know, what can I do to get better? What can I do to get better, you know? And and so and he did talk to me about my free throws, and so he and I would have free throw shooting contests because he has amazing form at a free throw line. Oh my goodness! And so I began to mimic mimic his free throw form. And it changed everything for me. So where people would foul me, you know, well, make, let her make it at the line. Well, of course I wasn't making it at the line. But after my <laughs> time with Coach Bird, I definitely began to make them at the line. So, yeah, he, he, he was really a good coach, really um, down-to-earth person. You know, I love the fact that he was a family guy. His, uh, and, you know, because there's not a whole lot to do in UNA, at UNA on the weekends. Even his son, Robert, would come over on the weekends and come to the dorm and said, you want to go to the gym? I was like, yeah. So I was on Saturday mornings. That's where you'd find me and Robert at the gym, you know, uh, playing basketball, playing one-on-one. -on -one. So, uh, yeah, I, I really appreciated um, all that he, you know, provided the opportunity he gave me to play at UNA and just the support he provided. Just an awesome individual, an awesome individual. Your senior year, you guys have won the Gold South Conference Championship. You got the revenge over Valdosta State from the season before. So, JUCO National Championship, uh, what was it like capping off your collegiate career with a conference championship? You know, at that, because that, you know, I'd rather lose by 20 than lose by one. Because you're, you're, you're thinking about all the things that could have changed that one point, you know. So that haunted me. That truly, truly haunted me that whole season, you know. And because, you know, I get it that they were celebrating, but to me, I just felt like it was just a little bit too, you know what I'm saying? I felt like they were mocking, you know. So I truly wanted the opportunity to be in that position again, you know. And so to have us in that position and to win the way we did, I mean, we fought tooth and nail for every single point. It was, it was an awesome battle. You know, and to be victorious on that and, you know, and I can't say to be vindicated because we were two really good teams, you know, but just to be the, the victor in that because it could have gone either way. That was so, so such a sweet victory that I mean, of my whole career, even the JUCO, you know, 
that was, you know, the best time of my career. You know, it's funny because you were talking about the JUCO career. So we're getting ready to play the championship, the JUCO national championship. I have a stress fracture in my foot. Uh -huh. See, there you go. And so I've been nursing it. It's good. It's tape. We're good. We finished practice. One of our point guards, we just got these new, the new things that came out where you put the little blinders on, right? So you can't see. So the school had gotten some new toy. She's dribbling it. She doesn't see me because she's, you know, looking. And she's dribbled and walked, stepped right on my ankle. We got to play that night. I, I tell you, I, that pain, I can, I can still feel that pain today. It hurts so bad, you know. And I remember, you know, going to the doctor, getting cortisol cortisone shots, staying in the whirlpool right up until the game, you know, and I basically hobbled that whole game. So winning that was more uh, overcoming, you know what I'm saying, what I was going through. So that was sweet in that way. But this one was proving that we could do it. You know what I'm saying? Because we had just come to the Gulf South. We were the underdogs. Nobody thought we could do it, you know. And so just being able to prove people wrong was just, that was great. That was great. You guys will go on to host the uh, first NCAA tournament game at home. A lot of firsts during your tender at UNA. I want to talk about some of your teammates, Renee Cody, Brenda Mays, members of the UNA Athletic Hall of Fame. What was it like playing with some of them? You know, Renee, I tell you what, I have never met anybody with such heart, such energy, with such love for her teammates. And I tell you, it's a shame that you know, they didn't have the three-point line when Renee was playing. Because I tell you, Renee could hit it from the other end of the goal. Easy, easy, 10 in a row. You know, so I, I'm, I'm sure there are others out there like her, but I, she she really, in my mind, didn't get her her due. You know, and I tell you, she was a scrapper. I just, I love the heart. I love what she brought to the game. Um, as a captain, she was such an inspiration. You know, she, you know, she led by example, you know, um, you know, you get a, a lot of teams and, you know, they, they're so disjointed. You know, we didn't have that, you know, because we had great captains like Renee. Now, your post-UNA career, it's just as successful as your UNA career. A great career with the Department of Defense. It's taken you all over the world. Take us through some yeah. of the stops and some of the great things you've done. So, um, I had the opportunity um, to go to Guam, to work in Guam. You know, I didn't even know what Guam was at the time. I said, where is Guam? But it's a, hold on just a second. Just give me a second. Okay, so it's, um, it's a, you know, a beautiful island in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's very small. I loved it because, it's, again, a very small island, 36. <laughs> 36, you know, um, so great opportunity again to, to work for the Department of Defense. The, the earlier part of my um, career, I was mostly uh, doing financial management. Um, so that was great. I was able to play with the Air Force. So got to, got to play, got to travel, you know, and play with the Air Force. I couldn't play, of course, in the Air Force tournaments once they, you know, got up in the level of the Air Force. But it was great to play with those young ladies and, you know, it was more, although I'm a competitor and I want to win, you know, I, I can play for fun and play to enjoy because I know, you know, everybody's coming, you know, from a different caliber. And, you know, um, it, it was just a lot of fun. Got to meet a lot of great people. Um, and so from Guam, uh, we went to England, um, to the United Kingdom. I actually had a daughter there. Um, that, again, was a great assignment. You know, got to travel, got to see some of the beautiful historic parts of, of United Kingdom, lots of castles. <laughs> so, um, so lots of fun there. Um, and from there, we went to Germany. So I was in Ramstein, Germany. Um, and so in these places, I've been to Italy, I've been to Greece, um, I've been to Rome. So I've just, I've had an opportunity to go and travel and see a lot of beautiful places uh, for the job and some for leisure. I've been to Paris. You know, lots of times my kids have been. So it's, it, it's just been a great experience um, to have that, you know. And I will say, you know, when I, I left Mississippi, after I finished up at UNA, I actually went back home um, because I wanted to go home. Brenda went to graduate school. She tried to convince me, and I said, no more. And I was done. My body was beat up. And I told her, I said, you know, she said, well, we can go back. You know, the WNBA had just kicked off, and I was getting all these calls. And I said, you know what? 
I said, I'm at this point where I think I can make more with my brain than I can with my body. And I'm just, you know, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, on my time, because I will tell you, you know, and I would tell people, I said, I don't have to run on a whistle. I always hated running. I always hated running. And I could hear that whistle in my sleep. Boop, boop, you know, <laughs> no, no, no more of that whistle. And, um, and so um, when I went to Texas, um, I was actually, um, I was doing sub, doing some substitute teaching and uh, was introduced to the superintendent of schools in the San Antonio school district who introduced me to the um, personnel is, personnel officer at the base at Kelly Air Force Base. And, um, and they were actually having a, uh, a, a what they, they call it, the deal, Department of Defense calls, a, uh, calls it a uh, palace of choir uh, hiring where they hire people in training positions, uh, they promote you every two years, and then you become a competitive employee. So, you know, because of my degree that I got from the University of North Alabama, I was a palace of choir selectee. And, you know, and again, I didn't at that time had no experience with the military or Department of Defense, you know, and, and there was a, um, a older lady who I met who was also, you know, one of the trainees and she kept telling me, she said, you have gotten in the best position you can be in, you know, and, uh, and I do appreciate, you know, the people who um, helped to get me there, you know, but it truly was, you know, because of, I think a lot of the, you know, the, the, the shaping and the, the, the skill sets of teamwork and communication that I learned at UNA, you know, to help me to get there. Last thing for you, uh, you and I were talking prior to this, and you had a great message for current student athletes who are maybe trying to figure things out. And you've had a great playing career, a very successful professional career as well. What advice would you give to current student athletes at UNA? Yeah, so like we were talking, I was talking about earlier, I said, you know, that um, I think that having these um, type of interviews will maybe help to guide some of those people who are unsure, you know, of what to do, because there will be life after your sport, you know, and you will have to figure out what to do. So, you know, as you're thinking about that degree that you're going to have, you know, think about those talents, you know, that you have. If you're a good speaker, excuse me, if you're good at writing or whatever it is that you love, think about those things and look for jobs in those uh, opportunities in those job uh, fields. You know, that was, like I said, one of the things that really helped me because, you know, working working being a, a basketball player you know you know you have to learn to communicate you have to work on a team um i remember going to a training class once and uh, one of the questions to me that was posed to me was um uh or uh how, when was the first time you were on a team or have you ever been on the team you know for me based on my perspective of that is i've always been on the team i was born into a team you know what i'm saying my family was a team i had to learn to operate within that team and so and that's what i talked about you know my progression through teams and so each one of those teams had different dynamics and i then had to learn to operate in each one of those dynamics as to how i was going to help the team perform because that's truly what it is as long as anytime you're on a team they're going to be team goals and so you then have to figure out what is your role in those team goals. And so, you know, I will tell you that, you know, all of the experience that you're learning, I'm going to tell you good and bad, because even with the bad experience, you learn the things not to do, you know, you learn at least what not, what doesn't work for you. And that's the one thing college, one thing college will prepare you for is that you may not know everything you love to do, but you'll definitely start to figure out some things you don't like. And that will definitely narrow down, you know, where you start, you know, to invest your time and your energy. And I would say take advantage as well of all of those, you know, use that opportunity to network as well, you know, um, because what I found out was there were people who knew people I knew, you know, which really helped also to open doors for me. So use that opportunity to network, which means, you know, and hey, that first meeting means a lot. It means a lot. When you present yourself to somebody that first meeting, you know, look them in the eye shake their hand, you know, make, make eye contact. That's important. That's important because that shows assertiveness for you, you know, and, um, and if you can't do it now, start working on it, you know, work on, work on it first with the people that you're comfortable with and then start working on it with the people you're uncomfortable with, but definitely, you know, use those professors, you know, use your coaches, use your trainers, use all those people to help fine tune your school, your, your skills. LaCondra, this has been great. It's been fun going down memory lane with you. Thank you for all the time, and congratulations on everything you've done. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, bye, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. And um, I'll buy my uh, lion, all my lion, lion alumni. <laughs> Roar Lions. Thank you. <laughs>